State, who would you like to call next? Billy Benton. Billy Benton. Mr. Benton, if you'll raise your right hand. We saw the squirrel or farm that the evidence are about to be able to do the truth. For the truth. And reason. Please sit down. Good afternoon, Mr. Benton. A couple things before we get started with your testimony. First is if you'll speak loud enough for our jurors who are sitting out in our audience section to hear you. And uh, the, the thing that we found is the closer your mouth is to that mic, the better uh, sound, especially with these masks on, we get. Second thing is if you hear an objection, if you'll pause your testimony and I'll instruct you how to proceed, okay? Yes, sir. Mr. Williams. Good afternoon. Would you state your name for the record? Billy Benton. All right. Were you previously employed, Mr. Benton, with the Jackson County Sheriff's Office? I was. Did you work there specifically from 2016 to 2018? I did. Okay. And um, what area of the Sheriff's Office did you work in at that time? Uh, narcotics, I believe. heard some testimony previously about the narcotics division. Um, let me ask you this. While you were in the narcotics division, what, what was your rank? I was an investigator, sergeant investigator. All right. Did you, while you were in that division, rely on, uh, partially rely on the use of informants for drug investigations? We did. At your time there, did that sometimes come from patrol deputies during routine traffic stops of someone for drugs? Yes, it did. Um, do you recall working with the defendant, Zachary Wester, when he worked at the Jackson County Sheriff's Office in the patrol division? Yes. Okay. Do you recall him being a, um, a proactive, hardworking deputy who, who made arrests? I do. Okay. Do you recall him ever providing you any kind of informants from a traffic stop? No, I mean, he, he's called you know, a few times, but That's, we yes never no. had Has a, he ever provided we, one to you? He never provided a, um, an informant that I can recall. Did you ever just, you know, in good nature, did you ever tease him about that? Uh, a few times. Now, the narcotics division, when you were in it at that time, did it come with an increase in pay being in the division? Yes. And was there the opportunity for overtime working those kind of investigations? Sometimes. Do you recall the defendant ever telling you that he wanted to work in the narcotics division at some point? He did. I know he he wanted to canine and he wanted to eventually be in the narcotic division. Okay. That's all, Judge. Dave, yeah, take time. Good afternoon, Mr. Benton. Evening. Good evening. I was thinking five o'clock. <laughs> um, so, are you you're no longer employed with the Jackson County Sheriff's Office, are you? No, I'm not. Um, what do you do now? Uh, farm and heavy equipment. Okay. Does that pay a little better than being a narcotics investigator? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Because <laughs> it depends on the crops and the weather, right? Um, now. Um, you said you recalled Mr. Wester working as a deputy, correct? Yes. Um, do you recall um, being on a stop with him as a, I guess, a backup officer with a uh, person by the name of Benjamin Bowling? Yes. 
and I believe there was a, a, a female with her or with him, uh, Shelly Smith. I don't recall her name. Okay, but you do remember that? Yes. Okay. Um, and do you recall anything unusual about Mr. Wester's actions during that stop and search of that vehicle? No, I do not. Okay. If you had seen something unusual or something that you didn't think was right, would you have stopped it? Yes. Would you have gone even further if you thought he was planning evidence? If I'd have witnessed him planting evidence, I would have probably called the sheriff and arrested him. Okay. Thank you. Nothing further. Mr. Williams? How involved were you during that search of Mr. Bowling's car? I was on the outside. I, I believe I was talking to the female most of the time while he was searching, just keeping an eye on the, on the occupants of the vehicle. You weren't right there with him searching as he was searching, were you? No, it was not. And it was nighttime, wasn't it? It was. That's all, Judge. All right. Mr. Davis, anything else? Yes, sir. Uh, all right, Mr. Benton, it's good to see you. You are still subject to subpoena in this case, just in case you have to be recalled. You are going to be released for the day, but don't talk about your testimony or any questions you were asked in this hearing today until this case is completely over. Okay, sir? All right. Good luck to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. State, who would you like to call next? Angel Hayke. Angel Hayke. Come on up, Mr. Hayke. If you'll raise your right hand for me, sir. You solemnly swear or affirm the evidence you're about to give to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Okay. You can sit down, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Hayke, before we get started, if you'll speak loud enough to make sure everybody in our jury who's out here in the audience section can hear you closer your mouth is to that mic, especially with these masks, it certainly benefits uh, our ability to hear your testimony. Second thing is, if you hear an objection, if you'll pause for a second, let me hear what the objection is, and I'll instruct you how to proceed, okay? okay. All right, Mr. Williams. Good afternoon. Would you state your name for the record? Angel Hayke. All right. How are you employed, Mr. Hayke? Uh, deputy at the Bay County Sheriff's Office. Were you previously a deputy at the Jackson County Sheriff's Office? That's correct. And what was your title there? What was your rank? Deputy Sheriff. And did you work there specifically from 2016 to 2018? That's correct. And did you know the defendant at that time, Zachary Wester, is another patrol deputy there? That's correct. Right. And um, did the two of you get along fine as coworkers at that time? That's, that's correct. All right. Did you have a chance to see whether or not he was a deputy that made um, arrests, specifically more arrests than you. That's, that's true. He seemed to make more arrests than you as best you could tell, correct? Yes, sir. And did you want to get better um, at being a deputy and, and making good quality arrests? Yes, sir. Do you remember asking the defendant whether or not he had any advice or tips on what you could do to better yourself to, to make more arrests? I do. Was he able to tell you anything? Uh, just told me to work, come out there and work. That's pretty nothing. much all I got was just to come out there and work. Nothing else? Uh, nothing, nothing specific. That's all, Judge. Mr. Davis? Good afternoon, Mr. Hayke. How are you? Um, you 
When did you leave the Jackson County Sheriff's Office? The summer of 2018. And Mr. Williams was asking you about um, Deputy or Mr. Wester. Um, so you knew him to make quite a few arrests? That's correct. Okay. Um, what about another deputy, Trevor Lee? Was he also making quite a few drug arrests? That's correct. Uh, would you say pretty comparable to Mr. Wester? Uh, I didn't keep up with the numbers, but uh, I mean, they were both proactive deputies. Okay. So they were both guys that were making a lot of arrests? That's correct. More than me. More than you? Yes. Okay. Um, now, uh, you were also on a stop uh, with Mr. Wester of Teresa Odom, correct? Yes, sir. Do you recall that? Yes, sir. And you were also, you also had a body camera, correct? Yes, sir. And your body camera was working and you downloaded your video um, for that stop, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to play just the beginning of your video um, and you'll be able to see it on that screen there. Um, and we're only gonna play about the first 40, 45 seconds of it, okay? able to see that okay on your monitor there yes sir and um, specifically did you see miss odom reach outside of the vehicle and open the car door from the outside just now yes uh you play it again i wasn't i wasn't looking okay if we could just back it up maybe 20 seconds That's it. Okay. And that was from your body camera, correct? That's correct. And you were present then for the rest of the search of this vehicle, correct? Correct. Did you notice or note anything unusual about what Mr. Wester was doing uh, doing during that stop? No, sir. Um, no red flags? No, sir. Did you see him grab any methamphetamine out of his car and plant it in Miss Odom's car? No, sir. Nothing further, thank you. Mr. Williams. Deputy Haykay, during the defendant's search of Ms. Odom's truck here on this video, did you mostly stay back in this position that we can see right here? Yes, sir. Did you ever actively participate in the search? No, sir. Did you see Deputy Wester actually find the methamphetamine allegedly from Mrs. Odom's purse? No, sir. If I can remember correctly, it was on the passenger side of the first time I actually saw the methamphetamine. That's all, Judge. Let me follow up, Mr. Davis. All right. Mr. Uh, hey, Kay, appreciate you being here today. You are subject to recall. That means you may be called again for any follow-up questions, so refrain from talking about anything that you've uh, seen, talked about, or heard in here today, okay? Right. Thank you, sir. Good luck to you. As Mr. Uh, hey, Kay leaves, let's sidebar real quick, gentlemen.
state, who would you like to call? Mike Hodges. Mike Hodges. Afternoon, Mr. Hodges. If you'll raise your right hand for the uh, clerk. Thank you, sir. You can sit down. Mr. Hodges, a couple things before you get started with your testimony. The jury's out here today. If you'll talk directly into that mic and fairly close to that mic, that'll help everybody hear you. Second thing is if you hear an objection, if you'll pause for a second, let me hear what that objection is and I'll make a uh, ruling and instruct you how to proceed. Okay, sir? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Williams. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Would you state your name for the record? Mike Hodges. All right, Mr. Hodges, were you um, formerly Lieutenant Hodges with the Jackson County Sheriff's Office? Correct. All right. Specifically, did you work there from 2016 to 2018, that time period? Yes, sir. Do you know the defendant, Zachary Wester? I do. And specifically, did you know him while he was a patrol deputy at, at the sheriff's office? Yes, sir. Now, at, at that time, were you a lieutenant assigned to what's called the Internal Affairs Division of the Jackson County Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir, I was. And generally, does the Internal Affairs Division um, exist to review issues that may come up regarding Jackson County Sheriff's Office personnel? Is yes or no? That's correct, yes. In July of 2018, did you begin an internal affairs investigation related to the defendant's use of his body cameras? Yes. And by August 1st of 2018, this is yes or no as well, did you recommend that the defendant be suspended from duty at the Jackson County Sheriff's Office pending the outcome of the internal affairs investigation? I did. And at that time, did you take his um, badge, firearm, his ammunition, those things? I did. What happened to his patrol car? Uh, when I suspended uh, Mr. Wester, um, due to the allegations that was, that was made, um, I called uh, Captain Arnold, who was his commander at the time okay, and that's kevin arnold correct? kevin arnold yes okay and uh, was that um was that patrol car taken um and actually placed in a secure helicopter hangar there at the sheriff's office it was by captain arnold okay and captain arnold also uh was the helicopter pilot for the agency correct correct all right To your knowledge, was that hangar a secure area at the Jackson County Sheriff's Office? Yes, it is. Was it an area that the you know ordinary personnel, whether that's a patrol deputy or an investigator, ordinary personnel would not have access to? Correct? That is correct. Did you have a key to it? No, sir. Did you rely on um, Captain Arnold to get into it? Because yes. Okay. Yes. Now on September sixth of 2018, did you conduct a search of the defendant's patrol car in that hangar? I did. And was it video recorded? It was. May I approach the witness? Yes. recognize that and reviewed it before now yes sir i do okay and is that a disc that you've reviewed that contains the entirety of that search that you've just testified to it does yes judge i'd move 14a into evidence at this time any objection okay. 14a will be admitted 
Mr. Clark, that will be admitted. Thank you, sir. Judge, this time I move to publish Statement Exhibit 14A, a disk containing two parts, um, two videos from that search. No instruction needed, counsel? No, Judge. All right, you can publish. Which one are you going to publish first? The first, for the record, will be titled, the file name is Zach Wester, video one. Okay. All right, this is in uh, regarding case number 2018-08-0101. This is an internal investigation against Deputy Zach Wester. Uh, we're here in the helicopter hangar uh, where his patrol vehicle is. It's been locked up since his date of suspension, which was August the 1st. It's been held here in the impound since that date. Uh, today is September the 6th. 2018 the time is 1321 uh, we're having part of the internal investigation uh, canine solo conduct a uh, search around the vehicle to see if he alerts on the odor of narcotics if so then we're going to have the doors opened and allow him to uh, search inside the vehicle if not then in this case this far as the car will be disposed of so we're just waiting on and I'm so low to, uh, to be deployed. Now this red um, kind of duffel style bag that you've pulled up and is is in front of you here, um, what, what is that? What kind of bag is that? It'd be an agency issued uh, first aid kit. Okay. And the gloves that you're putting on, um, we'll, we'll be able to see them throughout the video as well, but are they essentially those kind of latex yes, style sir. search gloves? Yes, sir. Okay. Agency as well? Yes, sir. Ms. Bittner, could you resume the video, please? that you just opened up did that contain what are what we refer to as field test kits that's correct okay 
Ms. Bittner, could you resume the video? Ziploc, large, it looks like a gallon size Ziploc style bag that you're holding there in the video, is that right? Yes, sir. Those canisters that are, are in there, do you recognize those from that agency? Yes, sir. Okay. Are those typically um, used by the agency um, for suspected to contain suspected narcotics? Yes, sir. All right. The um, canisters that are in that bag and the prior bag, were they all empty? Yes, they were. Okay. Please resume, Ms. Bittner. brown paper bag that you just pulled out from the back was it labeled in any way as in was, was there it marked any kind of a no. case number notated on it no sir is there any um evidence tape in any way on it holding it closed no sir is it had did it have any kind of uh, handwriting or markings on it linking it to any kind of um case or report of recovered or abandoned property anything like that no sir all right, please resume, Ms. Bittner. Pause the video. All right, was that a uh, Crown Royal brand bag or one of those purple velvet bags yes sir what did you find inside of that what did you see i believe that was uh suspected marijuana okay please resume the video that item that's a syringe okay um how long have you been in law enforcement 30 years okay. have you um had training and worked narcotics cases and narcotics arrests in your career yes sir are you aware whether or not a syringe um, can be used to inject controlled substances yes specifically methamphetamine yes and that marijuana you said it was suspected marijuana we'll hear later testimony about that but Based on your training experience, were you able to identify it as suspected marijuana? It was tested later, but when you when you saw it, did you believe that's what it was? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now this paper brown paper bag that's in your hand, this smaller one, was it labeled in any way? No, sir. Did it have any kind of a case number? No, sir. Any handwriting indicating where it came from? No, sir. Was there any evidence tape on it? No, sir. All right, please resume the video, Ms. Bittner. All right, Ms. Bittner, she 
saw the video again. What about that plastic bag you just picked up? I believe that was marijuana as well. Okay. Please resume the video, Ms. Bittner. I think that was just a clear little uh, plastic little Ziploc baggie. Okay. Please resume the video, Ms. Bitt. Pause video, please. Now, what did... Let's start with the outside of that box. That was a cardboard box or some kind of a scope, correct? Correct. When you open it up, what did you see inside here? I seen the, uh, the little canisters and I seen this other little box that's right there. And that, what I'm holding, uh, appears to have some kind of residue inside of it. Did that box have any kind of a evidence sticker on it or any marking? No, sir identifying it with a case or a, a recovered property report? No, sir. Please continue, Ms. Bittner. Pause the video. Is that a, um, like a watch case, a fossil brand watch case? Yes, sir. All right. And what, what are you finding inside at this point in the video? Uh, a bunch of uh, uh, different size, mainly the small type of uh, plastic, clear plastic baggies. Okay. And do any of them at this point in the video contain any, what you would suspect to be methamphetamine, any white crystalline material, or white powder? I honestly do not remember. Video, charger or something. We just had to go black, madam. There we back on again, so let's give it a second. I should play again.
for our record, we had the screen go black for about five seconds, but it's back up. Let's just make sure we be careful with that HDMI cord. Let's go ahead and match play again, please.
We saw in the video, Mr. Hodges, you place items that you explained where you found and what you believe they were in a brown evidence bag, correct? Correct. The remaining items that you did not place in that evidence bag that were um, in the patrol car trunk, for instance, even that first aid kit, the first thing you pulled out and what you put back in, um, would those remain the property of the sheriff's office to be inventoried and um, potentially used by um, a deputy again later or another deputy? Yes, they, they would have taken them back in, uh, took them off of Mr. Wester's property and then reissued them back out. Okay, they would have been reissued and be used. Yes, sir. All right, Ms. Bittner, could you please resume the video? Can you let your dog sniff inside? Mr. Hodges, at this point, the video clearly stops, correct? Correct. How was that, uh, was that brought to your attention by the person filming it after this stop that there was some kind of a technical malfunction on that camera? Yeah, Sergeant Billy Benton, he was okay. the one that was recording it. He was, he was filming it, all right. Judge, at this time, I'd move to publish the second video on that disc. If I could read the file name. Publish. Are your phone cut off for about what a minute, Billy? Yeah. All right. There ain't been nothing touched. 
Did you get the did it get the dog alerting? Yeah. Alright, so we have not touched anything, correct? item you've taken out is this kind of like a seat caddy from the front passenger seat of, of uh, this patrol car that's exactly what it is okay could you resume the video please Hodges, what is that black item there in your hand you're going through? Uh, search glove or black glove. And that's a different style glove than that nylon glove you have on there, correct? That's correct. Or, or late, I say nylon, maybe latex. Latex. Right? Yeah, latex glove, correct? Correct. All right, could you resume the video, please? Do you recognize that sleeve, that plastic sleeve there? I do. What is that? That is the uh, outer constant or outer cover of our field test kits. Okay. There's been uh, some testimony, and the jury's seen some exhibits with field test kits and videos. But um, does it have this one that you have in your hand here? Does it have any of those broken um, ampules in it? The reactants? No, sir. Reagents? Not nothing like that. Nothing. Does it have anything in it? It has a uh, 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 white powder in it. And how many years have you been in law enforcement? 30. Have you used field test kits in your time in law enforcement? Yes, sir. 
Can you think of any reason why there would be white powder in a field test kit in this condition without any reagent or label or anything on it? No, sir. Is this white powder that's in it, just to be clear, in this sleeve before the field test kit has actually been uh, executed or used? It, what it appears is that the ampules were just taken out of it. Okay. But it hasn't been it hasn't been used. There's no dye or no... no that's correct. Okay. Correct. There's no Q-tip swab or anything in there, correct? No, sir. Just white suspected powder? Correct. Please resume the video. And that other canister, the second one that we saw, what did that contain in it? It had, a, a, I think, a couple of clear plastic baggies. It appeared it had residue in the baggies. Okay. Please resume the video, Ms. Bittner.
All right, I believe that's going to conclude the search. It is 13.50 hours. And Mr. Hodges, going back to kind of like I was asking about that first aid kit or the things in the back of the patrol car, the uh, remaining property that belonged to the sheriff's office here in this patrol car and in the car itself, um, is that all inventoried and, and um, kept by the Jackson County Sheriff's Office? Yes, sir. Is a man named Quentin Hollis in charge of keeping record and assigning all that material? That's correct. He's the property sergeant. The items that you seized on this video and put in that bag, did you place them into your internal affairs safe? Yeah, first I went to uh, the drug unit and we laid it out, photographed it, weighed it, and then I bagged it and put it in, ev you know, um, evidence bags and then I put it into my safe. Well, were they evidence bags or were they internal affairs bags? Well, it's an evidence bag, but the label was internal affairs. Okay. Well, that answers the clear question. plastic baggies is what they are. Understood. And where did they go after that? Did they go to your safe? Yes, they went to my safe. In your internal affairs office? Correct. Okay, suffice it to say they did not go to the evidence section, evidence section of the Jackson County Sheriff's Office, correct? That is correct. Why was that? It was not a criminal case. It was an internal it, affairs it case. It was internal correct? affairs administrative. Okay. At the time that, um, let me ask you this, on August 1st, I believe I addressed it before, but just in case, on August 1st of 2018, did you make a recommendation that the defendant be temporarily suspended pending the outcome of that internal affairs investigation? Yes. And at that point, it, it was still an active investigation, correct? That's correct. And at the time of the search of this video, it was still an active internal affairs investigation, correct? That, that's correct. Now, did you also make a recommendation that a separate and independent criminal investigation be sent out to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement? I did. Is that because the internal affairs investigation cannot um, and should be, well, it should be independent of any criminal investigation, correct? That's correct. I couldn't do both. Just a moment, sir. Did it remain, did the property that you collected here remain in your secured internal affairs safe until you provided it to the special agent assigned to the criminal investigation from FDLE? That's correct. And did you, when you provided it to her, provide everything you had related to this investigation to her at once, all those items? I did. Nothing further, Judge. Mr. Davis. Good afternoon, Mr. Hodges. Good afternoon. So, when did you contact FDLE about doing an independent criminal investigation? I don't remember the date um, that I actually contacted. I actually had notified uh, my command staff first, uh, which was Captain Watson and Sheriff Roberts. And Would around uh, August 1st, though, seem correct? That's going to be close, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And you performed the search of this car in September, correct? That's correct. Why didn't you have FDLE search the car since they were doing an independent criminal investigation. That was the reason for the whole wait till the September the 6th. Um, I was back and forth with uh, in communications with Agent Diana Chase. Uh, once they assumed taking the criminal investigation, I didn't want to do anything to the vehicle if they were going to proceed to try to search the vehicle. That's the reason that for the delay. Once I finally got word from Agent Chase that their legal team said that they were not going to do it, then I did it. Okay. Why did their legal team say they weren't going to do it? I can't answer that. I don't know. Sustained. Remember, uh, Mr. Hodges, if you hear the word objection, pause your testimony for me. I didn't me. hear it. I'm sorry, sir. Okay. Speak up, Mr. Williams. Yes, sir. Look, uh, on August 1st, we know there's a criminal investigation going on, correct? That's correct. Um, and the Jackson County Sheriff's Office does have policies and procedures on how 
vehicles are to be stored if they're going to be searched, correct? That's correct. And they should be put in the secure area with evidence tape over the trunk and the doors, correct? Yes, in a criminal case, that's correct. Okay. But you didn't do that in this case, did you? No, sir. Okay. Because, I mean, we're here in criminal court now. Yeah. So your search ended up being part of a criminal case. At the time, we didn't know it was going to be criminal. Okay. Well, would it have been easier in the, to... In the, in the car. Well, wouldn't it have been easier to err on the side of caution and follow your own procedures on how you're supposed to store vehicles? That's what we did. Okay. So doesn't matter to you that there's no tape or anything on there to ensure the integrity of that search? That uh, impound area there was secure. I understand that. And then, the only and, one person and, that I knew of had a key to it, and that was uh, Captain Arnold. Okay. And, and I understand that may be your understanding, mm -hmm. but you also have a policy and procedure that says the car should be put in a secure area, and it describes the area, and it also says there should be evidence tape put over the trunk and the doors. Mm -hmm. And you didn't follow that, did you? No, because at the time, like I told you, I did not know if, if FDLE was going to have anything to do with the car. Okay. That's the reason that I didn't do the search to begin with to get the car back in service. But you knew there was a criminal investigation going on? I knew that they had started one, yes. Okay. And you knew that you were going to want to look in this car eventually, correct? I knew I, somebody, either they were going to do it or I was going to do it, one or the other. Okay. The inventory so, of the vehicle. So wouldn't it have been better to err on the side of caution and follow your own policies and procedures? I guess in hindsight. Okay. Um, I'm going to switch subjects a little bit, okay? Okay. Um, we're going to talk about, I want to ask you some, about some body cameras. Okay. Um, when did the Jackson County Sheriff's Office first get body cameras? I don't know the year, um, 13, 14, I'm guessing, somewhere along in there, 15. Okay. And that was kind of a new thing for the Sheriff's Department, correct? Yes. Because I think we went through like two different name brands of them before we got this final one. Okay. And the final one being the Axon system? Yes, sir. That uploads to evidence.com? That's correct. Okay. And before that, you said I, maybe one... I know, that, I know that one of them was a Vive View, uh -huh. uh, but I, and I don't remember what the other one was. Okay. And when did, so let's, so before you get the Axon cameras, you had the Vive View or some other brand, correct? Yes. And um, those, those would download differently from the Axon cameras, correct? That's correct. Um, you would have, the, the other cameras, you'd have to kind of plug into a USB cord stuff would download to a computer and then whatever was on there would have to be put into the proper case folders. That's correct. Is that and it went on actually the agency servers. Okay. And the once the information was downloaded to the agency server, it would be kept for 90 days? Well, on the original programs, um, they were held indefinitely. When I say the programs, the original, uh, the first two um, companies that we had, body cam companies, uh -huh. um, they were indefinite. The Axon is what now would, uh, depending on how it was categorized, would dump in 90 days. Okay. But I'm talking about the in 2000, before you got the Axon cameras, mm -hmm. wouldn't you do periodic reviews? of what was downloaded, and if you found something that you didn't think had any evidentiary value, it would be deleted after 90 days? No, sir. Uh, I didn't have that part of the job uh, that I ended up having. I didn't have that at that time. Okay, so you had it after you got the Axon cameras? That's correct. Okay. And so then with the Axon cameras, which came in in late 2017, correct? That sounds about right. Okay. So that, that was your job to review? To review, yes. I wasn't the, the sole person over the body cams. Caleb Corbin was actually the uh, IT guy okay. to begin with. And, okay. But I was the one that had part of my job was to review cameras. Yes. Okay. 
And did you keep a log and uh, of when you reviewed cameras and whose cameras you reviewed? Uh, no, not not when I did the uh, uh, random look. Uh, there would be a log of because I also not only internal affairs, I also did uh, use of force investigations. Uh, so there would be a log of um, the body cam videos that were viewed for that. Okay. But what about so your random reviews? Do you have any? documentation of when you did a random review of Mr. Wester's body cam? No, I do not. Do you have any documentation when you did a random review of anybody's body camera? No, I do not. Um, do you remember there being a problem with body cameras being turned off? I do. Um, are you aware of any specific person? Not off the top of my head, I'm, I'm not. Okay. Um, are you aware of any deputies being disciplined for turning their cameras off? I am not aware of that. That would not have been something that would have been handled by me. And at some point after you got the Axon cameras, uh, did Mr. Wester have a problem with one of his cameras? To my, yes, I do remember that. Okay. And was that camera sent back to Axon because it was malfunctioning? I believe so, yes. That would have been something that Kelly Corbin had, but I do remember hearing that conversation. Okay. And he was, and Mr. Wester was issued a new camera, correct? That's correct. Do you know a gentleman by the name of Joshua Emanuel? I do. And Mr. Emanuel was arrested by Mr. Wester, correct? That's correct. And did you get called the day that he was arrested? I did. And did you go down to the jail? I did. And did you um, tell Mr. Wester to issue Mr. Emanuel a notice to appear? Yes, after I had already got that approved through the sheriff. Okay. Is that a violation of policy to issue a notice to appear on a felony? No. It's not? No. Can you show me where in Florida law that's allowed? Uh, it happens regular. It happens regularly. I don't know of, of a policy uh, yeah. that says that. Okay, so you're saying it happens regularly that people are arrested for felonies and just and given a notice to appear instead of being booked into the jail? No, I think it, uh, it's case by case basis. A lot of exigent circumstances that go into it. It's not a common practice. Okay. If that's what you're suggesting. Okay. That well, that's what I was trying to find out from you. Yeah. No. So was it a, a special circumstance that Mr. Wester arrested somebody you knew, and that's why he got a notice to appear? No. Then why did he get a notice to appear? Based on me knowing the kid, the guy that well, he was, he's a grown man now. Uh, I've known him since he was seven, eight years old. His mother called me and told me that he had got arrested and uh, asked, was there anything I could do? I was like, I, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Um, so I hung up from her, called the dispatcher, asked about the case. They told me that Zach was the one that made the arrest. I called Zach. He told me everything that went on. Basically told me, he said, look, I don't believe it's his. It was found in the side of the console, but I had to charge him. I said, okay, well, I appreciate it. I called the sheriff. I said, sheriff, this is what the deal is. Is there anything we can do to help him? He said, you want to give him no ROR or a uh, um, notice to appear? appear? That's fine. And that's how that took place. Okay. And then did you have anything to do with his charges being dropped the same day a warrant was issued for his arrest? The only thing I had anything to do with was that day at the jail. Uh, I never had any other, uh, never even have spoken to him or his family since that day. But you were communicating at this time uh, via text with a Christina Pumphrey, correct? Yes. Okay. And yes. Christina Pumphrey is the one that signed the document dropping Mr. Emanuel's charges, correct? Yes. To my knowledge, that's correct. Okay. I'm going to have just a moment, Your Honor.
No further questions. Mr. William. I'd like to start um, where Mr. Davis ended, um, asking a little bit about Joshua Manuel. There's questions yeah. about that. Um, you said you'd known him since he was a, a young person, a child, correct? Seven, eight years old, I would imagine. Right. Did he have any... Um, you known him a long time. You knew his character, correct? I did. You sounded like you knew his mom as well, correct? I did, and his father. And you made sure before you made a recommendation about a notice to appear, it sounds like you had talked with the arresting officer, correct? That's correct. And you testified to Mr. Davis, to the jury on Mr. Davis's question, that Mr. Wester said he didn't even believe it was Mr. Emanuel's, correct? That's correct. But he was still arresting him for it? He arrested him, yes. Okay. Um, and then beyond that, you actually spoke to the sheriff as well. You took it took it above yourself as well, correct? correct. I didn't have the, the authority to take him, to give him a notice to appear on my own. It had to come from the sheriff. Now, I'd like to ask you, um, Mr. Davis asked you some question about the body camera system, and specifically he asked you if you were aware whether the defendant had a problem and had to get a replacement body camera, correct? Correct. The timing of that, do you recall whether that was around October of 2017 that that occurred? I do not recollect the time. Who would know? Caleb Corbin or Quentin Hollis? It would have to be one of them. Okay. I didn't have any dealings where the camera tore up and stuff like that, so I don't, I just remember conversation. Understood. I didn't have any, any hands in that one. Well, let me ask you this. When you did notice problems with um, any deputy, I mean, any body camera video you're watching, I'm not just talking about Mr. Wester here when he was working there, um, who would you report those issues to? I mean, would you go to the individual deputies or would you go through their command staff? Sometimes, that you know, if I run into the deputy, uh, I would say something to the deputy. Uh, sometimes it was their supervisor. Sometimes it was, uh, um, the, you know, commander or lieutenant. You know, I would say something to someone. It wouldn't be the same person every time. And it wasn't often either. Understood. Now I want to finish with where Mr. Davis began, asking you um, a little bit more about the search. You answered some questions about how the patrol car was kept and preserved. Um, Mr. Davis, in your work in internal, internal affairs, you're aware that internal affairs has to be kept very separate, and there are special protections ensuring that those investigations be kept very separate from criminal investigations, correct? It's correct. It's confidential under uh, Florida Statute 112. And you went to the trouble, you testified to label the bags that you placed those items in with internal affairs labels, didn't you? That's correct. Now, if you had followed the criminal procedure for evidence collection, which is an exhibit in this evidence, mm -hmm. to the T, and even put tape around the doors and the trunk of that car and kept it in a criminal evidence section locker, that would be following the criminal procedure, wouldn't it? It would. Now, that wouldn't look like an independent, um, excuse me, an internal affairs investigation, would it? Correct. It would look like it was both, really, wouldn't it? It would. And you understand in your work in internal affairs that those are not supposed to be coordinated. They're supposed to be separate, aren't they? They do not mix. That's all, Judge. Mr. Davis? Nothing further. All right, Mr. Uh, Hodges, you are still going to be under subpoena just in case they need to recall you, either the state or the defense. So don't talk to anybody about your uh, testimony here today or the questions you were asked. Also, refrain from talking or researching this case until it's completely over. Okay, sir, you still are under the court subpoena, all right? Yes, sir. All right, good luck to you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Uh, State Attorney, Mr. Davis, I think this is a good point to conclude our uh, afternoon. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Yes. Mr. Davis. All right. Well, juror, uh, this is uh, our stopping point for the day. Let me talk to you real quick, and then we'll let you go. 
As always, if you'll leave your notepads in your chairs, take your juror badges with you. Uh, I will collect your notepads, make sure they're secure overnight. Uh, if everybody will check tomorrow morning when you get in and uh, actually check right now, does anybody need a fresh notepad for tomorrow? So if you're gonna need a fresh notepad, just raise your hand and we'll make sure we get you one. Anybody think they're gonna need one tomorrow morning? Okay, looks like everybody's got uh, enough notepad to get through tomorrow morning and we'll check again tomorrow afternoon. If, you, if something happens in that regard, just let a bailiff know during our recess and we'll get you a, a fresh notepad. Leave those in your chair. Again, most importantly, for the purposes of our evening, uh, don't talk with each other about this case. Don't talk with anybody in your household about this case. Do not talk with anybody about this case. Don't research, don't blog, don't tweet, don't post anything online. Uh, the importance of this, and we've discussed this numerous times, is to preserve the fact that the only evidence and testimony that you get to hear and see in this case occurs in this courtroom. And that is a critical pillar of what we're doing here today. And I appreciate everybody understanding that as we continue forward. Tomorrow morning, if you'll be in the jury room, uh, I kept you a little bit later today. If you could be in the jury room at about 8.30 tomorrow morning, uh, be in the jury room and we'll get started. Hopefully, somewhere between 8.30 and 8.45, I'm gonna ask that we have all the technical stuff worked out before you get in as we probably delayed about 30 minutes getting started today, but we'll try to do better for you tomorrow. That being said, Mr. Williams, is there anything else uh, we need to say before we let them go for the evening? No, Judge. Mr. Davis? All right, we'll see you at 8.30 tomorrow morning. Appreciate your participation today. All rise.